Before we hear from our next primary speaker, there's somebody I want to introduce you to, and I hope that you will just give an enthusiastic welcome to, because we owe such so much to him. I had asked that Representative Dan Bishop be here today, but he could not. He was the one who championed House Bill 2 on the House side. But here with us today is the man who championed the bill on the Senate side. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Buck Newton. Thank you. This is a day, this is a day, <laughs> thank you, join with me now, this is a day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it, it is a beautiful day to be in North Carolina, it is a wonderful day to be with my friends and my fellow Christians and my fellow believers to stand up for freedom. Freedom here in North Carolina. It was my honor, my privilege and my honor to carry this bill in the North Carolina Senate. Just, just like it was to carry the Religious Freedom Bill to protect our magistrates who could not in good conscience perform marriages that they didn't believe in. It was my honor to stand up for religious freedom. It is my honor to stand for law and order in this state. Now, I want to, I want to take a little different tact here. It, it pleases me so greatly to so, see so many of our friends in law enforcement here today. I thank them for it. I think we should thank them. They have a, they have a very difficult job. They have a very difficult job in the best of circumstances. And this Charlotte ordinance would have made their job impossible, just as we've already heard the other examples here today. So I want to talk about law and order for just a moment. Did you guys know that we have an attorney general here in North Carolina? I mean, I mean, we, we actually have one. His name is Roy Cooper. Mr. Cooper, time and time again, has refused to defend you, the people of North Carolina. He's refused to do his constitutional duty to stand up for the laws of this state. He refuses to defend the constitution of this state and the constitution of these United States. He's too interested in running for office. He thinks he's going to be your governor. The man who does his job, Pat McCrory, works right here in this building. He was not afraid to stand up for your rights. He was not afraid to stand up to protect women and children. He was not afraid to stand up for common sense. Not Roy Cooper. He's still hiding. He wants to go over there and hang out with that crowd over there. Why am I talking about Roy Cooper? I'm talking about Roy Cooper because it's time we had an Attorney General who will stand up and fight for the people of this state. Will stand up and fight for our rights. Fight for the Constitution of this state and this country. And that is why I am proud to be the nominee for North Carolina Attorney General for the Republican Party. Now let me take just a moment longer because, friends, we have to understand that this, this battle that's being waged did not start in Charlotte. Star, Charlotte is just the latest round. It is just really the beginning. Now, as beautiful as this crowd is, the question I have to ask you, and you should ask yourselves, is why isn't it five times larger? Why doesn't it stretch all the way down Fayetteville Street? We must wake up our friends and our neighbors. We must wake up 
other believers to understand that this is never going to stop. They insist on forcing us to bow and kiss the ring of their political correctness theology. I choose the word theology on purpose because your theology is not important to them. They have no respect for your beliefs. We must bow to the ring. And it begins in so many ways. I, I have a friend here in the crowd. I won't point to him because I don't want him to get in any trouble. His name is Caleb. He's a very nice and respectful young man. The other side has hired him to follow me around and videotape everything I say. Because they're going to take it and they're going to chop it up. Now Caleb won't do that. He's just going to give them the videotape. And he's a respectful young man. I say that everywhere I go because he is. He's very polite. He does not get in my way. He doesn't follow me in the bathroom. What you need to understand is, is that the fight that we're having has just begun. They picked this fight in Charlotte intentionally. They want this fight because they want to browbeat corporations throughout this country to defame North Carolina, to beat up on North Carolina, and they want to use it in these next elections. Now, all these cameras that are here and all this media is here, how much of this do you think that they're going to accurately report on the news tonight? Friends, I'm asking you, it is on us. It is on you. It is on us to spread the truth. It is on us to tell the truth about what this bill is about. It is on us to make sure that everybody understands that all this bill did was say that what was common sense last year will be common sense next year. And the year after that. And a bunch of crazies on a city council in Charlotte or wherever do not dictate the morality of the state of North Carolina. That is for us, the people, to decide. Not a few radicals on the Charlotte City Council. So friends, I, I, want, I want to ask you to think about one thing. In this next election, in this next election, there's another guy who thinks he's going to be your Attorney General. We're going to have a new Attorney General. The question is, are we going to have an Attorney General who will stand up and fight for you? Or are we going to have somebody like Roy Cooper? Let me, let, me, let me leave you with this thought. We must stand up for truth. We must stand up for law and order. We must do this today, beginning today. Because my opponent, and I'm going to break a cardinal rule of politics, and I'm going to tell you his name. Because I want you to know his name. His name is Josh Stein. Josh Stein. Until 24 hours before this bill came to the floor, Mr. Stein was a Senator Stein in the North Carolina legislature. He resigned 24 hours before we went into special session to pass this bill. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Roy Cooper refuses to do his job. Josh Stein resigns his seat rather than to do his job. The truth of the matter is, is my opponent in this upcoming election is not just going to run and hide. He's going to open the door. He's going to welcome it all in. And he's going to fight for the radical political correct agenda that this city of Charlotte has tried to force down your throat. I'm asking you because the corporations, they're not going to give me money in this election. They're not going to help get me elected in this election. You have to get me elected in this election. I cannot do it alone. I cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone. We must stand together. We must fight. We must find our friends. We must wake them up from their slumber. We must help them understand. Friends, I don't like talking about who goes in the bathroom either. It's not comfortable. I listened to Governor McCrory when he was speaking about this issue and he was saying over and over again, 
I can't believe we're talking about this. I can't believe we're talking about this. I can't believe we're talking about this. Friends, I can't believe we're having to talk about this. I can't believe that we're having to pass bills like HB2. But we must. We must. The other side insists on the fight. The other side insists that we bow to their political correct agenda. Friends, it is my pleasure to speak to you today. It is my pleasure and honor to have represented my, my colleagues, my constituents, and my beliefs in the North Carolina Senate. It has been my honor to carry and speak on behalf of HB2 and plain old common sense. Thank you very much. Yeah.